Well, hello everybody, this is Mate. Welcome to the Public Security Advisory video. This is not going to be a funny video. Now, please watch this to the very end because there's dozens of Minecraft mods that have been infected. In fact, there's been a lot of attention about it recently. A lot of people saying a lot of different things. I decided to write a full article about this to guide you guys through it step by step because I personally found it very confusing. Please watch this to the very end. The chances are you might actually need to reinstall your entire system. And I'm not kidding when I say that. So basically what happened is uh, on Curse Forge and also on a Bucket, um, there's been a breach. Someone logged in into a bunch of popular, you know, authors accounts and they replaced legitimate mods which i'm going to show you later which which these are with hacked versions of them and they've also created a lot of uh, malicious uh, mods specifically designed to get downloads so that you can infect yourself here's a list if you go down and you click the link below this article you're going to see my website mindcommunity.org where this article is, has been published uh, first of all, I have to give credits. Let me just do this right now so people don't comment on this. Let me just give credits. The sources are at the bottom of the articles uh, that were the very first covering this. So first of all, there is a full list of plugins and mods that are being infected. Sorry, guys, not Minecraft plugins for um, specifically for Spigot Bucket, although there's been some already. So you need to be up, up, up to date with this. This list will be um, continuously updated. Here's a list. These files have already been cleaned. That means that these hacked accounts have been restored and they've patched, they removed the malware. Here's a bigger list. Uh, again, I'm not going to read this line by line. You need to visit the link below to see uh, the most up-to-date list of mods. These mods have been deleted, right? And we also have a couple of bucket plugins actually. The list is down below. I have sorted the list from A to Z. I'm going to keep track on and post more mods as they will come. Currently, investigation shows that there's been only close to 2,000 downloads of these mods. If I'm not mistaken, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe there's been more. So it's not that bad. But the problem is when it comes to the malware itself, it can actually copy itself to all of your files. Not only probably all jar files but the investigation is pretty early right now so we don't really know all the information but the problem is it can infect their entire operating system okay it can also steal cookies login information from your websites on your browsers it can also replace cryptocurrency address with not my address i wished but with the attacker's own address uh, it can also steal Discord credentials and steal Microsoft Minecraft uh, credentials as well. So it's pretty bad, especially given the fact that it can actually copy itself over to different files, right? Now, who was not infected at all? So right now, if you are a lucky, uh, lucky dude who own a Mac like this, and there's a specific reason why I brought this computer right here, you're not infected. It's been only reported to be on Windows and it's been only reported to be on Linux. Now, the thing with macOS, they can obviously update it and there can be more breaches. As of right now, with the information that I found, macOS is safe. Does not mean that it's 100% bulletproof. It just means that this particular uh, malware, as of right now, is not spread on macOS. Okay. So, what you should do, uh, you should check the list of infected mods. If you don't use any mods whatsoever and you only play vanilla through the official launcher, if you've never touched any mods ever, uh, you, you are 100% safe. Not 100% really, never. I'm probably going to delete this number, but you should be safe, okay? You should be safe, but if you did mod your Minecraft, please check the list just to see if you've been infected 100%. If you are not sure if you're infected, uh, there's actually a bunch, a bunch of great tools which you can download. Again, the article provides everything that you need. There is a first tool called Jar Infection Scanner, which is going to scan a different folders, different folders such as the test server that you have or micro directory. You do have to browse and select it manually, and it's going to de de describe the infections on the other side of the screen. You can just download it from this link right here. Uh, there's a problem. I already opened a ticket about the problem right here one hour ago. Seems like nobody commented yet. So that's why I do recommend the other tool is called Nico Detector. However, this one is a bit tricky to run. So you have to run it 
uh, you have to basically create a another file to as a launcher script, right? Um, I provided a lot of information how to, to do that here. I'm not going to spend too much time on this video on how to do that. But if you do run it in your console, this will do a thorough scan of your entire system. And hopefully, you know, hopefully it says pray that you're not infected. Hopefully you will not be infected. Okay. Now, what, what to do if this or this one finds that you are infected? There's multiple stages, excuse me, there's multiple stages to this malware, right? St stage zero is probably only the files um, that it's been, that been downloaded. And again, I'm not the creator of the, of the malware, so we don't really know, but that's the investigation so far. And then there's another stage which can actually spread out into the system. For, that, for the other stage, if you see that you've been infected with the first stage or you just want to be safe, there is another tool called Detection Tool. It's going to scan your files on your disk, on your operating system, to see if the malware has already entered its next, next stage. You can get it. This one is actually very simple. You just download it. Uh, you can download your distribution either for Linux or Windows. Simply open it just like that and hit the scan. And it says there has been no detection whatsoever. There's also a bunch of manual guides on how to find these files. Again, I included the original source uh, for these manual guides below if you do want to check them as well. Now, if you happen to be one of the unlucky ones that happen to be infected, um, at this point, there is no guarantee to which extent the infection spreads. So if you want to be 100% safe, you need to do the following. You need to back up everything that you have on your operating system. And I'm going to be very honest with you. And you need to have a separate drive. I just personally like to have a flash drive. This one costs $20, $30. It's not that pricey where you can actually back up all of your files, right? And then maybe get another one of these drives where you're going to paste your new copy of your operating system as a bootable um, ISO format. You can basically Google this if you need help with this. If you're not proficient on how to reinstall your operating system, you have to unfortunately consult with a professional or just visit a repair shop and, you know, mention what happened. Um, but just make sure to use a separate drive for backing up your files and then use the other drive for backing up, uh, for creating a copy. Now for downloading the operating system, make sure to also use a different computer. That's why I brought this Mac OS here. If you want to be hundred percent safe, I would just recommend using Mac OS to download the operating system, download your windows, copy legal, download your Linux copy, paste it on Mac OS, create a bootable drive and then uh, just do a clean wipe, unfortunately, because we don't know which to what extent uh, the operating system is compromised. And in that case, you just have to go with the full and clean wipe, right? Also, I'm just going to see if I cover this step right here. On a separate device, change the passports to all services you were locked into on the old machine. Discord, email, bank, etc., etc. are very important. Do this again. Make sure to have a separate device, ideally macOS. These are not affected. If you don't have one, uh, just go to, I don't know, ask a friend to use theirs or uh, just use a separate device. There should be fine. Now, a couple of security tips before we finish this video. There's something called two-factor authentication. This should be pretty familiar with you by this time. It's a pretty mainstream concept. Make sure to have it on, guys. Just because you're familiar with it, people are not having it enabled. My Spigot account actually got hacked because I did not have two-factor authentication on. That was about seven, six years ago. So make sure to do have it, do have it, and then use. you can use an app such as Authy on your mobile phone if you want to. Um, easily, you know, just use your phone to authenticate when you're logging in. So you you have to first enter the passport and then confirm on your phone. It's very safe. Number two, you should use a strong firewall with no automatic rules, such as that every new program that um, creates new connection, it's going to get blocked and the, the firewall will actually create a pop-up on your screen where it asks for the permission of yours to continue running that program and connecting it to the internet. I personally use something called Asset. Asset Smart Security, really nice tool, really nice tool uh, that has that option. It is a paid antivirus or anti-firewall, anti anti-malware is paid, guys, but uh, I do highly, highly suggest that I've been using it for, I guess, a decade now, which is crazy, and I've actually never suffered from a really terrible infection because of that, because every single time it, like, tries to connect somewhere, it's going to print out the 
the IP address. They actually have like a cloud service where people can submit samples. It's going to give you a reputation of that IP address. There's a lot of information online. Uh, even if you're not that proficient, it's going to tremendously help you, you know, block things that are not supposed to be typically running on your computer. Now, before we jump off, I do want to make a quick adjust, a quick adjustment, quick announcement. We've recently updated our coding programs. Hopefully you're not going to use them, misuse them guys. Okay. Be nice. Um, but we've had people go through our coding course called Project Orient to actually create anti-piracy and anti-malware protections because Project Orient course covers how to make Java applications. It has a full Java course. It also covers how to make uh, Minecraft plugins. It does not specifically cover uh, Forge mods. That is not covered, but if you just want to build a micro server, a micro network, having custom solutions, this is completely, uh, this is an excellent program for you. I'm not going to spend too much time because this video is a public security advisory. I just wanted to let you guys know that we made a big update recently. It's been a lot of things have been changed. A lot of things have been reorganized. I do recommend you, you know, check it out, check the link in the description. And that's about as much time as I want to spend on this show. Again, guys, I'm extremely sorry to having announced these news. These are not pretty news, but it's better know it than not and be compromised. Uh, make sure to do the steps if you're using any mods and yeah and then comment below this video if you have any new information i'm also going to be leaving the windows uh, not the windows the comment section on this block open where people can comment on this and hopefully hopefully we will come up stronger from this thank you so much this has been Mike, and i will see you in the next video